this is the sea, as old as the world itself. It extends over three quarters of the surface of the globe. The sea, the birthplace of life, the great storehouse of minerals, the prison of haunting mysteries. The ocean is a dangerous jungle. Each creature preys relentlessly upon another. Each animal is equipped with an effective weapon, speed, camouflage, knife-like teeth, poison. Since time began, the ocean has withheld its secrets. Man has ventured merely to its threshold. Oceanographers have, with precise instruments, presented us with a framework of facts. Around these facts, our imaginations reconstruct the eerie, forbidding atmosphere of the deep. Scientists, working with sonic equipment, discovered a mysterious layer which returned an answer to sound waves. This layer measured over 300 miles and lay 1,500 feet below the surface. It was soon noted that the phantom layer rose to the surface at night and descended to the deep water in the daytime. It is composed of living creatures capable of locomotion that are apparently strongly repelled by sunlight. Some oceanographers believe the layer to be made up of plankton. Others suggest that it is a gigantic concentration of fish. The most startling theory about the phantom layer is that it is composed of millions of squid. This theory is supported by the fact that squid are tremendously abundant. As the sun's rays become weak and soon turn into complete darkness, the fish are all black, brown, or silver. In the blackness of the deep sea, the strange phenomenon of luminescence is found. Half the fish that inhabit the darkened waters are able to turn their luminous torches on or off at will. Lower forms of life are known to have this luminous ability as well. Some fish have rows of lights. Perhaps these are signals, signs of recognition. The deep sea squid ejects a fluid which becomes luminous, a counterpart to the ink ejected by his cousin who lives in shallow water. The eyes of many creatures who live in the black world are enlarged and protruding, making the most of the intermittent lights which may reach them. On the other hand, some animals have no eyes at all. They have developed and perfected antenna and feelers. Their entire world is known to them through the sense of touch. Several years ago, a fish was caught alive off the southeast tip of Africa. It was an amazing sight. This animal was supposed to have been dead for at least 60 million years. After this discovery, they found the frill shark. He lived 25 to 30 million years ago. Perhaps there are other such anachronisms to be found in this region about which we know so little, other links with the past. Perhaps we can find the answers to many of these questions. We are now prepared to invade this black wilderness. I hope you enjoyed the pictures. We had a great time filming them. As most of you know, tomorrow marks the completion of Mr. Matheny's diving bell. I hope the next film we make will give us a lot more information. Do you really think you'll find it much different at greater depths? Occasionally, a new species may rise briefly to about a hundred feet from the surface and be seen by a diver. They return quickly, however, to oh, about 600 feet. We intend to see what may exist thousands of feet below that. Nathini, I've had a lot of admiration for the things you've been doing in shipbuilding and navigation equipment. Oh, but this diving bell of yours is sheer nonsense. It's a waste of money. I'm sorry you don't share our enthusiasm. Even if it does work, which is doubtful, does that justify the cost involved? 
Curiosity is one thing, but you spent over $70,000 on a toy. Have you ever heard of Millard Wyman? Of course, I've read his books, and I believe he's your brother. He believes the sea could hold a food supply vast enough to feed the entire world. You built this bell for him? Oh, I'm afraid Mr. Wyman needs no help from us. He had his practically completed at the time we began. Well, then what's the sense of another? No frontier was ever explored by just one expedition. Our first dive will be in the Pacific. Then we'll try the Gulf. Right now, Wyman is in the Caribbean. He's making his first attempt with his bell somewhere along the southeastern keys. Double check the bell. I'll be ready as soon as I get some clothes. Bates says our location is perfect. Looks like a big march finally here. Well, Laurie and I are all set. How about this marshal? Oh, yes. Better. No, never mind. I'll get him for you. Try to relax, Wyman. You should be elated, not worried. Sorry, Wyman. I guess I'm too anxious. Look at me and think I was the one who's going down there. Well, let's get going on. Wait, 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 Anything until I come back up here with the pictures. What do you think I'm going down in that contraption for? Look, we'll have an absolute exclusive on this. Every wire service will get the depth information, but we'll be the only ones with the actual pictures. Now, does that make much sort of sense? Come on, lady reporter. The time has come for your promotion. Or should I say demotion? Well, whatever it is, Skipper, you won't lose me on this show. I'll go on back to shore and call the office. <laughs> Hold it. Thank you. Now, goodbye, Tom. Uh, good luck, Dale. Good luck, Dale. Thank you. So long, Dale. Yeah, I know you're disappointed that uh, Tom couldn't make it, but he... I just couldn't get him to come out. He asked me to give you this. Well, I hope he knows what he's doing. As I do. I shouldn't make a fool of myself telling you what this day means to me. Well, you people are taking my place in a way. I feel as if you'd been working with me since the beginning. We're very grateful to be able to have a part in your work. You'll be going deeper than any man has ever attempted before. I wish I could go along with you. I know how you feel, Mr. Wyman. But I'll be talking to you every inch of the way. Yeah, I know, Craig, but it's not quite the same thing. Well, good luck, Craig. Thank you. Paul, Mr. Wyman, you girls will let me down now. You take care of these fellows, they get scared. <laughs> hey, buddy, drop her. Craig, you ready? Ready whenever you are. Air pressure okay? Fine. Everything's 100%. Here we go. All right, ready! Now, the game dark? No, not 
Javier. from the ship. He'll interview Wyman before the launch gets out there. I can't believe it. The conditions were ideal. I see. Yes, of course I do. You can reach me here. I'll be in all day. Thanks for calling, Hank. Your brother's attempt was a complete failure. The bell broke loose at 1,700 feet. Can we contact the ship? I'm afraid we'll have to sit tight until Hank's men get into Key West. He promised to call us as soon as he hears from them. Mr. Wyman, sorry to barge in on you this way. We'll be leaving the ship soon. I wonder if you'd give me some information. You saw everything. What can I add to it? Or would you mind telling me something about the occupants? I know Dale Marshall, but not much about the other three. The other three, as you put it, were very brave people. Overconfident as I was. Well, had they been working with you long? Laurie and Paul were students of mine, the Institute of Oceanography. Craig joined us a bit later on, mainly, I suppose, because of Laurie's devotion. Well, did they have any part in uh, actually designing the bell? No, I'm afraid not. I am the only one who's responsible for that. Well, what do you believe went wrong today? I don't know. If I did, it wouldn't help matters. Well, the bell obviously had a weakness. You must have some idea where it was. Everything is planned and research. I don't know the answer. The public will take a pretty dim view of your research. I suppose so. All right, opinion of me doesn't matter now. How much time do you think we have? Oxygen tank only holds on to cubic feet. Well, at least the shutoff valves worked. 
It could have been flooded when the cable broke. Although I don't know what good it is to prolong the inevitable. Laurie worked with Lyman for three years to build this. Dale Marshall was going to get a big story. You were going to see new sea creatures for the first time. Three noble ambitions to be blown up by one engineering mistake. Oh, well, I probably wouldn't have seen any new... Craig. We're not on the bottom. There's light on here. You must be on some kind of a shelf not too far below the surface. I don't see how that's possible because we dropped out of the penetration of light. Well, how could we have moved upward? No. At this point, I couldn't care less. Will we be able to get out of this thing? Well, look, at this level, the pressure shouldn't bother us. We should be miles in the darkness, but yet we're not. Well, what are we waiting for? <laughs> Let's check out of here. to the surface. So just remember, try not to get panicky. Right. Well, you better go first. Give the girl somebody to follow. Right. They went, I suppose they figured it was worth a try. Isn't there something we can do? Some way that... No, they'll never make it to the surface even without the pressure. I'm afraid they were pressed the moment they left the bell. What we see is their bodies floating up over the currents. Ships in vicinity of longitude 23, latitude 75. Please stand by to search the area. Repeating, ships in vicinity of Marlin 8, please stand by to assist. it'll take for the bodies to reach the surface. It's been quite some time since we lost them on the sonar. They may not come up this far at all. We'd better move out if we don't spot them in about five hours. I know it's none of my business, but didn't you have your own money tied up in that bell? I mean, it was your own project with no affiliation. 
None of the universities had any confidence in it. Only myself and those down there. I understand there's another bell ready, built by an outfit in California. My younger brother designed it. They'll be interested in finding out where mine failed. I suppose we'll never know the answer to that. upon miles of these tunnels. Yeah. So many of them, we could easily get lost. We better head back. Yeah. but I, I have something I believe is important. Yes? Well, I called to you and Mr. Wyman while I was watching the sonar, but... Well, apparently you didn't hear me, and I wanted to keep my eyes on the screen. It's all about it again? Well, sir, I... I don't know exactly what I saw, but I'm sure they weren't dead bodies. I saw two of the same masses move practically as they did before. How do you know they're the same? Well, the characteristics were identical. And they weren't floating. I'm positive they were moving under their own power. How long did you have them? Several minutes, sir. They moved along together, then one suddenly changed direction. I lost them at exactly the same spot as before. You probably saw some large fish that were curious about the bell. Begging your pardon, sir, but I've seen plenty of fish on that screen. I know this reading was of something else. You said they changed direction. The currents are pretty strong at that depth. But only one veered off. The other continued straight up. Well, whatever the objects were, it's a sense the bodies aren't going to float to the top, and we've wasted enough time as it is. 
Sir, it's possible that That'll they... be all, Wilson. Return to the radio room. I have problems enough with the storm to contend with. Yes, sir. You know, if we had all the conveniences of a kitchen, I'd still prefer barbecue, just like this. When we leave here, what do we eat then? Well, these caverns have water pools everywhere. Probably fishing all of them. I also saw some planktonic shrimp back around the rocks. It must really be late. Is anyone as tired as I am? You better get some sleep, Laurie. You too, Dale. We've been through a lot today, and we'll probably do a lot of walking tomorrow. Dale and I found the crevice. It's fairly dark inside. At least it will seem like nighttime. Don't worry about getting cold in there. I'll bet the temperature here doesn't vary two degrees. <laughs> you make it sound like Miami Beach. Come on. It's not the ocean floor, either. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Take all this diving gear along with us? Mm -hmm. It's too heavy. Leave it right here. What do you think our chances are? What do you really think? You sound as though I haven't been leveling with Dale and Laurie. I know you, Craig. You've got an uncanny ability to hide what you feel. Paul, I've been diving for quite a few years. But the deepest I ever went was about 200 feet. Frankly, I haven't any more idea about where we are now than you do. Well, haven't you ever heard of these underground caverns? I read some theories about the Earth being honeycombed with caverns containing air pockets. Then the air we're breathing might not be coming from the surface. Possibly not, if you want to believe theories. How far down do you think we are? No idea. Might find out something about the mineral deposits along the way. Well, I guess only time will tell. I'm going to get some sleep. You know, I'll probably dream about breaking an altitude record in a helium balloon. Salt content, probably good as any well water. It's better. Can we afford a time out here? Sure we can, Laurie. We'll rest until you're ready.
Maybe a while before you get anything else to read. But I need your advice. I'll ask for it. Sorry. I didn't realize. You don't realize a lot of things. You probably never will. I didn't mean to intrude, Dale. It was just a friendly joke. Friendly? <laughs> well, you just listen to me, Miss Innocent. There's nothing friendly between two females. There never was and there never will be. Sorry you feel that way. I was hoping we could help one another. You don't need any help. Neither do I. Not as long as we have two men around us. get through them. We'll have to go back. No, we shouldn't lose our direction. There's a water pool to the left, about 50 yards back. We'll have to try going through it. And if that doesn't lead to another cavern? Then we'll have to drop back to the fork and try another course. That'll mean losing a lot of time. Well, let's try it. Yeah, let's go. Plenty of shrimp. I feel like I could eat about three dozen of them. Said there wouldn't be any shrimp around in the clear water. He's looking for some sort of crawfish. Just so there are plenty of them. So what's the difference? They both taste terrible. Uh, I'm going to hunt up some roots for the fire. Exactly my line, but I'd say he's been dead about 10 or 12 years. It's horrible. He probably kept walking until he dropped. Look, this is the best indication we've had yet. This man could have come down here directly from the surface. And I suppose he liked it so well, he decided to stay here and die. Perhaps he just lost his way. Is that any better? Cry! <laughs> diving bell. A cable snapped, dropping us to the bottom. We left the bell and found our way in here. You see, we were attempting to break a depth record. Oh, I'm Paul Whitmore. This is Craig Randall, Laurie Talbot, and Dale Marshall. I've been here 14 years. 14 years? 
I don't think we want to stay quite that long. Would you mind leading us out? There is no way out. But how did you get here? And that fellow back there? He was killed long time ago. I was more fortunate. But how did you get here? The same as you. And you haven't found a way out in all this time? There is no way. This is air we're breathing. It wouldn't be here if there went an opening to the surface. The air comes from a volcano about two miles from here. Are you sure of that? I'll show it to you. Would you like to visit my home? Well, I don't know. It isn't far. I'll take you there. made this place comfortable enough. I carried stones here to make pots and flint for fire. Sometimes I traveled to the salt water to bring back seaweed. You look at the size of this claw. There's no known species this large. I use it to spear fish. But you have fine weapons. With them, we can hunt much better. Hey, are you positive there's no opening to the top, even a small one we could hack out with some kind of tools? I'll take you to the volcano so you can see for yourself. And then you will know as I do. How soon can we start? We must first have food. I have enough for all of us. Do you think he really knows? I don't think he knows up from down. But we'll have to go to find out if there is a volcano. Well, there's no sense in all of us knowing. You and Laurie should take a breather. You want us to stay here for a reason? Well, we'll probably be taken through some pretty rough places, no telling how dangerous. I'd feel better if you stayed. You all set, Craig? Yeah. The old man's been up there waiting for over an hour. Don't you think he's a little eager to show us that volcano? That's why I want the girls to stay down here. Never did buy that story about that ship sinking 14 years ago. What do you think he's got up his sleeve? Well, maybe nothing. But I still think it'd be a good idea if you'd wait down here with Dale and Laurie. Oh, now, wait a minute, Daddy. I'm no babysitter. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll trade places with you. Okay, you win. We'll both go. I think the girls will be all right as long as we stay with him. Yeah. Besides, they're planning a swimming party, and we weren't invited. Too bad we can't get a sun bath. I can do without it. The sun always gives me a bad time. I got burned once at the beach and... Oh, well, it's not important now. We've been here quite a long time. They should be getting back soon. Are you afraid they'll bring bad news? I'm afraid I am. I keep telling myself that old man couldn't possibly be right. I can't make myself believe it. We'll know soon enough, one way or the other. You know, I was afraid until I realized that if we do spend the rest of our lives here, we, we can at least start a new one. Anything that happened in the past can't bother us here. Don't make me think about it. And let's not start painting any dark pictures before we know.
You're so quiet. Does that mean that... That volcano's there, all right. Spotting air by the ton. And he was right. Well, that is... Maury! Maury, it... Look, it won't be so bad. We took it hard, too, at first. Walking down there and all that, but... Look, I know it's not going to be so terrible. After all, we've gotten... you have nothing to look forward to, but I felt the same way until I realized how really fortunate I am. That is, if you... What I'm trying to say is that, Laurie, I've been in love with you for a long time. I plan to tell you before now, I just, I never seem to be able to. Oh, I wish you I wanted to hear you love me. As long as I have you, my life's complete. Anything beyond that's unimportant. Pleased to meet you, sir. Sit down. You certainly got out here quickly. I came directly from the airport. The telegram sounded quite urgent. Suppose you elaborate for me. Well, I understand you're giving up your plans to try your bell. We've given it a lot of consideration. Uh, the project has been costly, and we've devoted the entire lab to the bell development. I'm afraid the wisest thing we can do at this time is just give up the project. This is, of course, because of the results of mine. Why, well, I mean, if it weren't for your pioneering and research, this bell wouldn't have even been built. When your brother came to work for me, I knew where his ideas were coming from. You mean your bell is similar to mine? As you can see, the designs are identical. But uh, the hatch, the cables, are they the same? Why, yes. Why? Mr. Matheny, I'd like to ask you for a personal favor. A favor? You have no confidence in your bell because it was patterned after mine. And rightly so. But if I could take the responsibility off your shoulders, what do you think he does? I can make the dive myself, in the same location as before. I don't understand. How, how can you, of all people, consider doing this when you know that the bell is obvious? I believe it can be done. 
I've always believed it. If I can't at least turn my failure into a success, I'll be doing a grave injustice to four gallant people. What makes you think that the results would be any different this time? Since I returned from the Caribbean, I've been like a man who was living apart from his own soul. I knew there was an answer somewhere, but when I searched for it, my mind just wouldn't function. I think it was because of my condition that I finally discovered where the bell failed. You found the reason? The chain broke not at the weakest link, but at the strongest. I don't understand. The bell was designed with supports to take a stress five times greater than what we anticipated. We even thought of using booms on two different ships. It was added safety factor. We overcame that with added couplings together with uh, a pellet release system for balance. But in our extreme measures for added strength, we actually defeated our own purpose. Until we stopped work here, the plans were to use three ships for support. You don't need them. Depending on the overall weight descending, you must equalize the supports to parallel the point of water pressure above and below 2,000 feet. You mean it's, it's the pressure pushing upwards that causes stress? Exactly. We went all out for strength and supporting the bell. When we reached the point of water pressure where there was no up and down factor, the couplings ripped off the seams. Wyman, I know what a successful operation would mean to you, and I certainly want to help, but this, is, well, this has all come so fast. I don't know what to say. Of course, I wouldn't ask you without offering something in exchange. I have a ship available that will take us to the Caribbean. It's fully equipped. The owner will do everything he can to assist. I suppose if I didn't go along with you, it would only be a matter of time before you'd, you'd raise some money and be building another bell of your own. Just mean an unnecessary delay. However, I'm afraid there's one thing I'll have to object to. You're going under. But if I, if I know that young brother of yours, <laughs> you jump at the chance. Let's go out to the lab and see him. <laughs> three times already this morning. I suppose that means I'm not doing my share of the work. Not at all what I meant. Anyway, we'll have some decent containers as soon as the men come back from the bell. Well, I hope they bring my camera back with them. I could use it for one of the decorations. Well, Craig said that they would only bring back the most important things. I'm sure your camera... Craig said this. Craig said that. Craig said. What is he around here anyway? Some kind of monarch or something? Take that old fool with him when he could use a couple of extra hands to help carry things. 
sure Craig knows what he's doing. That's exactly what I mean. I'm fed up with his doing. Nobody's gonna dominate me. I'll see to that. Nobody's trying to. Do you think I'm gonna put up with this routine? You're crazy. Dale, there's nothing I can do to make him feel any better. Oh, yes, there is. And you're gonna start doing a few things my way. Dale, I don't want to argue with you. Will you just leave me alone? I'll leave you alone when I get good and ready to. And so will Craig when the time comes. So that's it. You're not getting all the attention. You're pretty smug, aren't you? Just because we're all That's trapped. enough! And Dale, I don't want to discuss this again. I'd like to get down there. You probably have enough air for one more dive. So let's make it count. Okay, well, I'll keep an eye on you. the other bell and they still can't believe it how is Laurie and miss marshall well girls have been doing all right how long have you been out of air only a few minutes i've got some coffee Glad you do. I will help you. And that's all I need. We will kill them. They will what? It is easy, like I killed Maurice long time ago. And after we kill them, we can be alone here. Now you stay away from me. Stay away! Stay away from me! Well, maybe I should kill you instead. <laughs>
do any good. We gotta go find Chris. explain the feeling when we first saw the bell. We'd given up hope and, well, nothing ever looked so good. I do wish the old man had been as fortunate as we are. Uh, if Mr. Wyman's up there, tell him that Lori is fine. She'll be saying hello in just a minute. Lori, I... Well, I think from now on my whole life will be changed. I realize how terrible I've acted. Do you think you can ever forgive me? Of course I can, Dale. I've always wanted our friendship. Glory. Well, little lady, you've got the scoop of the year. Well, not this time, Jimmy. The story goes to all of you. I want you to meet your benefactor, Mr. Matheny. Matheny, we're very grateful. We've only Wyman to thank. Thank all you. his idea. Can't thank all of you enough. Come on, you people, move back a little. Let's give them room to breathe. <laughs> room to breathe. You know, I never thought about it much, but there's nothing greater. Well, I don't know about you people, but man, I'm ready for a two-inch steak. Ah, Let's shove yeah. off! Yeah. <laughs> 